Hello, everybody. Welcome back to D Zoned, the illustrious series where we play 1994 wads. Let's go ahead and summon the wadinator. The RNG gods have made their decision. D Zone backslash match 12. So I don't really see a readme file for it. So I guess we're just going to go ahead and play it and hope for the best. Like that last one. This is also an E2M, sorry, E1M2 replacement. So let's see what happens. Maybe there will be a few fewer symbols of peace in this one. And I'm going to go with Deathmatch Wad because there are no enemies. Chest high walls? What is this? Gears of War? Ha ha ha. Oh boy. Gotta say, this would be pretty damn frantic. A lot of shotguns, a lot of cover, yeah, this would reward some pretty tight movement. I don't know, I don't know about the piles of, okay, um, this looks like Twitter, okay. Yeah, I don't know about the piles and piles of ammo, that seems a little bit, uh, suspect. Secret? Secret. Of course, then again, this might be uh, designed for Deathmatch 1.0 rolls where the weapons stay and the ammo doesn't respawn. Yeah. Alright, well, that was that. <laughs> I guess we're picking a different one. Alright, we're back here. Let's just go ahead and go to the next one. The Grid. And we actually do have a readme for this one, so let's just go ahead and... The Grid, The Grid. The Grid by Dave Owens. Four-player... Oh, okay. Specifically designed four-player deathmatch level. Fun single-player, too. Lots of nooks and crannies. Yeah, we'll see. So this is an E2M1 replacement. For single-player, co-op, deathmatch, supports difficulty settings, has one exit, new level from scratch, build time seems like forever, believe me, brother, I know the feeling, and do 5.1. Pretty typical. The Grid.Wad is a specially designed four-player deathmatch level. It's a large level, but you don't end up wandering around looking for your opponent for hours on end. I hate that. The only advanced weapons that are available are the chain gun and the shotgun. I added monsters to the level so single play is enjoy single player play, blah blah blah, is enjoyable, but the level was really designed for multiplayer, cooperative, or deathmatch play. It's a straight up knockdown drag out shooter. Do whatever you want with this level, but if you really screw with it, take my name off of it. <laughs> if you decide to add a bunch of uh, you know, symbols to it. If someone decides to include this in some special deathmatch episode or something, I'd like you to put my name in some sort of documentation so I can feel important. If you really like this level, give it to someone who likes playing four-player Doom. Or, if you feel the need, send me a wad that you made. If anyone has any problems with this level, especially three or four-player, I don't have access to a network, please drop me email with the nature of the problem. Maybe I could fix it. Alright, yeah. And that was the thing with networking, is it was definitely more interesting back in 94. So here we go. Let's take a look at the grid. Warp 2 1. I'm trying to think of how I even title this video. It's like one minute of the match one two. I mean, I'll just I'll just call it the grid. That makes that makes a bit more sense. Okay, well. I don't know about this being a grid. Ooh, 101 enemies. So I'm guessing these are yep, teleporters. Which brings us down into it's a little maze-like area. Huh, multi-leveled. I like it. So with good movement, you could basically stay up on top and keep the higher ground. Wait, what, what? The fuck? I think that's that... I think I'm getting hit from way above. Where am I getting hit from? But look, look guys, I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on and why my shot disappeared. Oh, another one of those weird, uh, tool issues. I'm trying to think, did... 
I don't remember which tools it released. I don't know. I just can't remember if they released like a, a node builder and then people just ported it to DOS or what, because Doom was using Next Step for pretty much all of Doom's development, aside from just the final PC stuff. Which I will say makes it very easy to port it to other platforms. Like, there's very few assumptions made for, uh, you know, with regards to architecture. So, yeah. It is quite, quite the nice code base to deal with. I mean, you look at how fast people were able to port the uh, Linux Doom, which was the thing that was ultimately released, back to DOS and pretty much says everything. Well, even me, I'm not the greatest C programmer in the world, and I was able to get an SDL port with uh, 64-bit native binaries up and running in, uh, I don't know, a couple hours. So yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Ooh, I just tried that on a whim, and it worked. Yay. Yeah, I guess if you want to... <laughs> I would say one problem with that is that it kind of gives you this... Oh, I can't get to that. I guess I can jump down from here. It gives you this false sense of security. You're like, oh, I ported over a, you know, DOS game, quote-unquote, with such ease. And then you make the mistake of getting overly confident, and then you realize, yeah, nothing is this easy. Like, literally no other DOS game is at all like this. And I'll bet if we saw the original DOS source code for Doom, we'd probably be singing a different tune as well, because uh, there was a lot of kind of assembler functions in there. Because from what I understand, and I'm trying to think of what video I saw this on, I want to say it was probably an L LGR video or something, but the original uh, Next Step version of Doom wasn't exactly fast. It was a... Oh. I see. Because the render and everything was all written in C. And you figure, yeah, I mean, the next boxes were badass workstations and all that stuff. But still, uh, software rendering in just a graphical environment like that was a little bit taxing. Especially being like a higher resolution system like Next was. Okay see one problem with this everything kind of looks the same so although at least I can tell where I've been based on the bodies that always helps okay so yeah if you want a fun project port doom to insert platform here whichever one you want it's really not that bad I mean assuming you have basic knowledge of C <laughs> That kind of helps. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Not super crazy about these uh, little hidden nooks and crannies, but they're consistent. Which would kind of make it a bad spot to hide because you just kind of launch one rocket in there and that's the end of you. Or I should say the person you're, you know, shooting at. Okay, 65 out of 110. Of course, it's also implying that this level has the rocket launcher, which I do not believe it does at this point. Yeah, I don't know. 70 out of 101. Remember earlier on how I was kind of wondering what was hitting me? Yeah, now I know. Now I know. Oh, see a key door. Throw caution to the wind, just open the damn thing. Oh, it was nice of that imp to open the door for me. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. There's an objective here, right. So, oh, yeah, that caco that's just kind of been stuck there. Ah, get me out of here. Let's go over... This way? Yeah, this way. Take a lot of chip damage, that's for sure. Can I just item bump this? No. Alright, jumpity jumpity time. It's kind of good because I was running out of shells. 
And there's plenty here, so. Excellent. Alright. It's always nice when people make deathmatch levels and then they put a little bit of substance to them. And by substance, I mean single player. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Good stuff. Can I just do this? Oh, wait, no. I'm smart. Here we go. Let's go ahead and snipe that caco while we're here. It's also where the blue key is, so... That's going to be kind of nice at some point. But that area there, is there? No, not really. Um, hmm. We've only collected one key so far. We're, we're doing very well. And good job, Spectre. You just dodged into a fireball. So we got almost all the kills, but there's clearly some areas we haven't been to yet. Hmm. Okay, so are those just spawn areas? And then you just... I think they are. I don't think you can get back into those. Oh, are there doors over here? Huh. Or is it just like a little... No? I don't know. Oh, you can just touch it. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. So this gives you access to the... Uh, kind of an overview of the arena, I suppose. Now, where could that yellow key be? It's kind of unfortunate that I didn't go here now because that imp so helpfully opened the door for me that one time, but... Uh, you know. Lines are also... Look at them. They're... It's almost like the... Uh, person who made this didn't know about the uh, snap to grid function. Or something. Which I'm fairly positive that Dew had. <laughs> so... Yeah, I don't know. Alright, well, I'll just go around these... Uh, Outside areas. Okay, where's those amps? Somewhere. Oh, I'm getting distracted. There we go. <laughs> gotcha. There's the yellow key. Hey guys, I found it. Man, that's annoying. <laughs> Alright. Just go ahead and snipe these imps. How many do we have after this? Um. Too many. Ow. Okay, there we go. Just gonna check all these little areas. I think we got them all. Yeah. Two more at the exit, maybe? No? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was kind of getting a little bit old. Alright, well that... I would actually say it's probably a little bit too much for a uh, four-player deathmatch. It's kind of a big map, really. Um, I mean, I guess there are a lot of little hiding spots, but I kind of disagree with the author's notion that there'd be a lot of just straight-up action and not a lot of chasing. Because, I, I don't know, that's a lot of ground to cover. And it seems to me like the time to kill would be very, very low, given how claustrophobic everything is, so... Kind of seems like whoever gets the, uh, whoever sees the other one first would probably have the, you know, definite advantage more so than usual. And, uh, you get the kill and then all of a sudden you're looking for the player again. I don't know. It probably would have been better with maybe half the size, quarter of the size. Why am I critiquing a map from 1994 as if the person was watching or cared? I don't know, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's what happens when you put a microphone in front of me, I guess. Anyway, that was, um, can't remember, check the title. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.